Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Phillips household. Um, this is our wall of baskets. I, my, my wife does the decorating. I, I don't know why there's a wall of baskets, but there is. So it's there. I uh, hope you guys are having a great Sunday. Um, we're going to be in the book of Proverbs today, jumping around a little bit. And we're going to be talking about an interesting topic. Um, now, please do not turn off the video the moment I say what we're talking about, okay? Don't turn it off right away, okay? Remain calm. We're going to be talking about loving your parents and your siblings. See, some of you I already know. Some of you are already gone. But if you're still watching, um, I'm proud of you uh, for not running in fear. Because we're going to talk about loving uh, our parents and loving our siblings. Because um, let's be honest, some of you guys are trapped with your families in quarantine. Um, the walls are closing in. And I get it. I know what it's like. I grew up in a family with six people. I know what it's like. So let's jump in here and talk about it. Um, but uh, first, let's just pray real quick. Father God, you are good. Um, and we rejoice in your goodness. We rejoice that we can be adopted in the family of God, that we can all be brothers and sisters through your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, and it's in his name that we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, in Genesis, God creates the family unit, and he creates uh, a husband and a wife, uh, and he tells them to be fruitful and multiply and to create a family. Um, and to bring children into the world for them to care for and to love. Um, and so first I want to talk about parents. Um, I am a new parent. That is interesting and it is fun. Uh, we've been enjoying, you know, getting to know our baby Judah. Um, but, but being a child and respecting your parents is not something that comes natural. Um, it's something that sometimes takes some effort. So a couple of things I wanted us to think about with our parents. Um, first is this, your parents created you, so we need to respect them. Uh, Proverbs 30 verse 17 says this, um, The eye that mocks a father and despises a mother's instruction will be plucked out by ravens of the valley and eaten by vultures. It's pretty intense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, this proverb is basically saying, though, look, if, if you don't listen uh, to your parents and you despise the advice and the counsel that they give you, it's as if you're blinding yourself. Um, it's making life harder for you uh, to see things clearly. Um, and, and often we get so angry at our parents, but we also need to recognize that, that they're the authority that is placed there by God. Um, God gave us the parents that we have. And so we need to, to respect them and listen to their instructions because let me check this out, guys. Um, parents have been around longer than we have, and they have more life experience. Uh, an example would be my son was outside in the grass, and he would pick up dandelions and go, wah, wah, and he'd shove them in his face. Uh, and I'm like, son, don't eat that. And he got really angry at me, like, yum, 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 yum. whining, because he's a baby, uh, whining that I was telling him not to put dandelions in his face. And he, he didn't have the perspective to realize that that's not actually what you should be doing. And, and at times, we might feel like we know best. And, and there might be times, of course, that our parents are going to be wrong. But the more life experience that you have, the more wisdom you're going to have. Um, and the Bible even talks about this in Proverbs 20, 29. It says, the glory of the youth is their strength, but gray hair is the experience and splendor of the old. Uh, meaning the older you get, the more experience you have, the more that you have to offer to younger people. Um, so when your parents are offering advice, don't just roll your eyes and think, oh, here we go again. Recognize they might have gone through this same situation. They were most likely in middle school as well. Um, you know, you, if you middle schoolers have been around the youth group a lot, you know the advice that I give on dating. Um, don't ask single people for advice on dating because they're single. They don't have any experience. I see so many middle schoolers go to their friends like, oh, hey, can I get some advice about dating? And the friends are like, yeah, sure. But their friends are single and like don't have girlfriends or boyfriends. Why would you ask them for advice? And then we're like, why would we ever ask parents for advice on dating? Well, they apparently did pretty good. Your dad did pretty good at dating because he made your mom marry him, right? I mean, he did some right. So maybe there's some advice uh, and wisdom to be gleaned from the experience of life that your parents have. Um, and then finally, I would say that that it is our responsibility uh, as children to to obey our parents. 
Um, God put them in authority over us, and we need to listen to their instructions. Of course, it, as long as they're not asking you to do something that is uh, wrong or against God's commandments, um, we should obey them and listen to them. Um, even if we don't think they're being fair, uh, even if we don't think that um, their way is best, we need to be obedient to them. I know that's not a fun thing, and maybe some of you, again, have turned off. You don't want to hear the video anymore. You're like, Barrett, how much is my mom paying you to make this video? Like, no, I, I'm saying this as a son, having gone through uh, many situations where being obedient to my parents is hard and challenging, but but in the end, it, it reaps good fruit. And so just in the same way that we should obey our Heavenly Father God, um, we should be earnest to obey our earthly parents as well. Um, now let's talk about siblings, okay? Um, siblings were actually given to us by God. Um, they're they're family that is built in and they're given to us by God. I know you might think, well, Barrett, it feels like they're given to me by Satan. Okay, not by God. It feels like Satan put them there when they're kicking the back of my seat in a long car ride uh, or when my siblings are just eating all the food that I have stashed in my house uh, or just being irritating. It just feels like they get on my nerves. Um, and I know what it is to get irritated by your siblings. Um, I know what it is to get in fights with them and, and I had three siblings. Um, but my advice would be this. Um, we are called to love everyone, um, and that includes your siblings. And often we are very short and impatient with our siblings. Um, and, and impatience comes from when we are prioritizing ourself or our own situation or our own time or our own needs um, over other people. Um, you might get impatient if your sibling wants to go to a restaurant that you don't want to go to when your family's picking. Or you might get impatient because uh, your sibling is monopolizing the time of a conversation or is taking something that you des believe you deserve or um, just wanting something from you that you don't want to give to them, um, whether it's attention or time or actually something material. Um, and we can be short and rude and harsh to them. And so I, I challenge you to love your siblings as Jesus has loved you. Um, and to love your parents as Jesus has loved you. Whenever I'm struggling to love someone, I focus on how Jesus has loved me. Um, and it puts everything into perspective. Um, 1 John chapter 4 says, We love because he first loved us. All right? And if I'm being honest, um, family can be hard. Um, maybe you're in a home and things are challenging there. Um, your family feels broken or they feel like a source of pain, not a source of, of love. Um, maybe your family is just um, getting on your nerves like we talked about or, um, or broken in many ways. Um, I want you to hear that first, the Lord sees you in that pain. He loves you through it uh, and he will never abandon you and never forsake you. You always have a Heavenly Father that is there for you. But I also want you to hear that, that even in their brokenness, even in perhaps ways they might be treating you that are unfair, um, we should still love them dearly. Because we treated Jesus unfairly, and we weren't perfect towards Him. In fact, we were wicked towards Him, and yet He loved us. So I, I challenge you guys, and I challenge myself, to love others, particularly those in your home, um, as Jesus has loved us unconditionally, um, putting their needs before our own. And so I, I'd also challenge you to find ways to practically live this out. Um, maybe it's finding a way to serve your siblings and doing the chores that are theirs that aren't even yours to do. And you might be like, uh, why would I do that? I know it sounds crazy, but when you care and love someone, um, you do things that seem crazy. Um, love makes us act crazy because it makes us put others' needs before our own. Um, what if you decided to, to make a nice, fun date night for your parents? Uh, I've seen some kids uh, do this on social media um, where they made a date night for their parents and made like special treats for them and popcorn, uh, giving them tickets or served them dinner. Um, I mean, what if you did the dishes for them? What if, what if you just found creative ways to love your parents and respect them, and to love your siblings. Not because you want something from them, um, not because you have an angle, just, just 
because you want to show them love. And by the way, they might not even deserve it. They might have been terrible to you during this quarantine. But we're not supposed to just love the people and be kind to the people in our life that are kind to us. We're called to be kind and love everyone, just as Jesus loved us. So love you guys. Um, focus on loving your family um, and find creative ways to do that. I look forward to hearing about that. Um, praying for you guys. Have a great day.